In today's video, we're going to be having a look at five new features for the recent 2021.7 update. Check it out. What's going on guys? I hope you're all doing well. It's the first Wednesday of the month and you know exactly what that means, a brand new Home Assistant release. We're going to be having a brief look at five new features that I really like in this update. If you're after a full breakdown of everything included in this update, head on over to the official Home Assistant YouTube page. Every month, Home Assistant do a live stream presented by the founder of Home Assistant and also the developers working on it. During the live stream, you've also got the chance of asking the developers any questions you might have. And you can also take part in the ongoing live stream chat. Or maybe you're more of an audio person, in which case go check out the Home Assistant podcast. This podcast follows the Home Assistant updates and it's going to contain everything you need to know about the latest update. You'll find links for the Home Assistant YouTube channel and podcast in the description below. In addition to this, I'll also include the official Home Assistant blog post, which contains a written breakdown for all of these new features. So with all that said, let's get on with the video. Up first, we have a new entity known as Select. You may be familiar with the Select Entity's cousin, the Input Select. The major difference between these two is that the Input Select can be configured by you, but the Select Entity can only be configured by an integration. This means that integrations can dynamically assign what's included in the Select Entities, but they're not editable by you, the user. The select entity will allow integrations to provide a selectable choice either through the Lovelace UI or through automations using services. Some integrations such as MQTT and WLED have already started making use of this entity in their integrations. Moving on then, we've got trigger conditions and trigger IDs. Previously, if you had a big automation with a bunch of different triggers, it'd be quite difficult to work out which trigger actually fired the automation off, which is exactly where this comes into play. So you can now assign an ID to a trigger that gets passed into an automation. Now when you're setting up the triggers for your automations, you're going to have this new field that's going to allow you to enter a trigger ID. So you can specify a trigger ID and that ID will be used to link to that trigger so you can easily work out which trigger was fired. You can then add a condition and give it the condition type of trigger and it should automatically find any trigger IDs you've got within this automation. Having that trigger ID makes things super simple and you're now going to need less conditions in order to work out what trigger actually caused your automation to run. Following on from that, we've got script debugging. Way back in update 2021.4, the ability to debug automations was added. This is a powerful tool that allows you to debug automations to find out how they executed and what happened. You can view a visual representation of the path and choices that your automation made. You can view the trace timeline, the related logbook entry, and also the automation config that executed with your automation. There's also a ton of other debugging goodies available in that tool, and that tool now works with scripts. So everything you could do with automation debugging, you can now finally do with scripts. Next up, we've got referencing other entities in triggers and conditions. This change is definitely small but mighty, but it's a welcome addition to scripts and automations. So we can now reference other entities for the above and below values for the numeric state triggers and also the conditions. For these references, we can use both census and number entities. And as you can see with Frank's example here, we can now do things like trigger an automation if the outside temperature is higher than the inside temperature. The last feature we're going to have a look at is dates in templates. With this one, we've got a new method for manipulating dates and it's the as date time method. This method should hopefully simplify using date and time objects in our calculations in automations and scripts. In Frank's example here, he's using it to calculate the number of days until his driver's license expires. Just before we wrap up, I'm going to show you one of the new integrations that was added in this update. And this new integration is forecast.solar. This integration is genius and I'm looking forward to having a play around with it. Essentially, what it does is it provides solar production forecasting, which is going to allow you to estimate how much energy your solar panels are going to create on a specific day. You can then make use of that data within your automations and create some eco-friendly and power saving automations. I'm not sure how accurate or how far in the future this integration can see, but it's going to be a fun one to have a play around with. And there we go, guys. That's been a quick look at five new features in the new 2021.7 update. Out of those features or any of the other features in this update, if there's any that you want to see me cover in a bit more detail, then let me know in the comments below. If you want to see more bite-sized update videos like this, then also let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to drop me a like. And if you're not already, hit that subscribe button and ding dong the notification bell. You'll then be alerted to any future video that I do. As always, a massive thank you to these awesome dudes. These awesome dudes are my Patreons. If you're interested in supporting my channel, there'll be a link for my Patreon in the description below. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.
Cheers.